All right, so I wanted to make a video just on Ghana's power data and just the power data in general for the Tour de Provence. So stage one, Ghana, no one posted, but basically the TT was done at like, the biggest numbers I saw was like 480-ish for Ludwigsen and the same with Matteo Jorgensen. Now this is the crosswind stage. So we see here, I assume most of you have watched this stage, but basically it was quite chill, um, as we can see here, like 300 normalized. He's a big boy. He said 88 kilos. That seems too much maybe, but you know, anyway. Uh, around that sort of number. So anyway, we can see on the left here, there were some really hard sections, but this was the hardest section. There was a 10 minute period here, which was really hard. So if we look on the map, it's actually quite useful. You can see they basically were going along this road, then turned right into the crosswinds and the wind was coming off the coast as my mouse is sort of doing now. And um, this was the really tough part. Um, 497 watts for 10 minutes is absolutely bonkers. But this bit at the beginning was really hard. Again, 700 watts for a minute. And this was really where it was sort of made because without this sort of huge effort, if we look at the peak five minute power as well, that was all about the same part as well. This five minute effort here, 525 watts. He had uh, Viviani on his wheel and he was really making sure that Viviani made the split and Luke Rowe had Carapaz on the wheel and Ineos got their two main protected riders into the split. So it was a really impressive ride from them. And um, to be honest, like once they made the ride, so it made the um, made that turn, there was like 20 minutes of hard again. So like 452 watts here. So like pretty hard, but 490 normalized for 20 minutes, which is obviously very hard. But as you can see here on this corner here, they then started to go into more of a headwind um, and it sort of died down. So we see and see the next part, it's sort of down to like 400 watts, which obviously isn't easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but in the relative comparison is, is not as crazy, but it's always also interesting to look at the peak normalized. So you can see here, he did three hours at 400 watts, uh, which was basically this part of our race. He also did like an hour at 440 watts, which is also bonkers as well. So very impressive numbers nonetheless. So I just refresh it so you can actually see the power data. Um, but as you would have been aware, Matthew Bodnar attacked very, uh, very late on. Um, and it was a pretty impressive, uh, pretty impressive result. So this was like more of the headwind part, a little bit easier. Um, but again, we can see towards the end, the end, Ghana does a huge effort. So it was on this sort of last bit towards the finish line where Bodnar attacked. And if you can remember from the helicopter, it was on this part here where basically it was like a massive crosswind. Um, and Ghana does this huge effort here, um, 500 watts for six minutes at the end of the stage in order to basically make sure no one comes past. So this is when he went over Ghana, um, over Carapaz, sort of put him in the gutter a little bit. Um, and then this is where he responded to some of the attacks as well from uh, people like Mads Wurt Schmidt. But anyway, 500 watts towards the end was a really, really strong result. Um, and the last bit anyway, he still did like a 1300 watt sprint to try and help, um, well, I guess, to help out Roe and all the rest of it uh, for Viviani. So a really strong performance from Ghana and you can see some absolutely crazy numbers here. Um, sort of ri ridiculous numbers, really. Uh, and then this is stage three, which again was a relatively hard stage. Um, if we actually look at just this part here, uh, 360 normalized. He, there was a climb here, which Coppedis really set on fire in order to to drop all the sprinters for uh, Brian Cocar. So you can here see 473 watts, 5.6 watts per kilo, probably a little bit less maybe um, if he says he's 88. But again, like a pretty hard climb, but nothing crazy for Ghana. Um, and then the run into the finish, they were chasing Goujard. And again, it was relatively hard, but nothing, nothing crazy. 385 normalized. But this last part here, um, if we sort of look uh, on the map more, it's, you can see like where they actually turned into the climb here. Um, the sort of low speed part here was um, sort of 500 watts for the last four minutes, which is maybe only six watts per kilo. But going into the final climb, it was a, it was like a, it was a pretty hard effort for Ghana, but nothing crazy. But this sprint was very impressive. Um, after that, he, he um, whacked out 1100 watts for 20 seconds, which is impressive with a peak of 1259. So nothing crazy peak wise, but pretty consistent, like long effort. And you can see like the last minute was at 775 watts, which again is like pretty strong from the boy. Um, but anyway, we'll go on to, we'll, we'll actually, we'll, we'll get out the results first because I think it's important to see where Ghana finished. So obviously Nairo Man won today. Uh, he did about 6.2 watts per kilo, I'd say. Some people say six and a half. I think that's a bit too much, but I think he did about 6.2, 6.1. The numbers today weren't crazy, to be honest. Uh, but we can look at um, Ghana finished about here with Battistella. Um, he got disqualified from some stupid bike change that I'm going to ignore. I was tempted to make a video just on that, but I decided that there was no point doing that because... Um, I have very strong opinions that it was a stupid thing to disqualify for him for because teams take equipment from the side of the road the whole time. But anyway, alas. 
Uh, so this is Matteo Jorgensen's power data. So if we look at him, he finished third, so he's sort of ahead of everyone else. Um, the people like Cycling Grass and Night Chaka, they often get the numbers wrong. Uh, I don't really know why they don't use the Strava data. They seem to think their own algorithm is more accurate. I sort of disagree. Like a lot of stuff they get right, but some of it they definitely get wrong. And they said he did 5.8, he definitely did 6. Uh, and you look at some of the other results of Battistello, who did like 5.8 and finished a minute back. So again, I think... Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure where that come from, but anyway, six watts per kilo seems about right, really. Uh, 1500 van, you know, it's not it's not crazy, um, but for a bigger guy, again, this last 11 minutes at 440 watts is a really strong effort from Jorgensen. I actually really rate him, I think he's going to be really good. Uh, he's got strong TT, he's good on the climbs, like not exceptional, but he also, I reckon, has a fair few kilos to lose. Um, and then he managed to finish third, as I said, and then GC wise, um, he finished fourth, which I think is a really good result from him. Uh, and then you can see Nida Man, uh, Alaphilippe, and everyone else. Gabriel Xavier also had a good ride. I was surprised by how good he was. Like, I always know he's good, but he seems to have really stepped up this year. Trek in general always seemed to go quite well at the beginning of the season. Like, uh, Brambilla won uh, Tour de Haute-Var, a Maritime last year, and then did nothing for the rest of the season. So maybe that's what Gabriel Xavier will do, but maybe he won't. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video. Um, it's interesting to see the sort of numbers the boys are doing uh, early on in the year. Uh, nothing, you know, absolutely bonkers so far, but again... Um, it is early season, um, but anyway, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Um, the reason I don't have a camera uh, camera on is just because my microphone's a bit messed up, but we're going to fix it hopefully the next day. But what I forgot to say was actually Ganna's numbers. So, you know, if uh, Jorgensen did six watts per kilo, then I reckon Ganna probably didn't do that. Um, I think he did like maybe five and a bit because he finished a minute down where people were doing like 5.8, but because it's not a steep climb, I reckon his watts were helpful. So my estimation is about 470 watts, 480 watts. That's what I said on Twitter. And I was expecting him to upload the power data. He hasn't. But in all reality, I think it'll be around that for like half an hour, 40 minutes, which is absolutely bonkers again. Um, just absolute, obviously, what's for here, not crazy. But thinking about like what people can do, it makes 470 is about right. It could be a little bit less um, just because the drafting effect, like at 26k an hour at the bottom, he would have had to do less watts just because a lot of it is just overcoming air resistance. Um, so yeah, anyway, Cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy, and we'll see you in the next one.